Don't take lightly what this prophet is saying regarding the same thing that happened with, with Elijah. There was a divided opinion when Elijah got onto Mount Carmel to destroy the prophets of Baal and ultimately Jezebel. Do you understand that they were of two opinions? Israel. I've never, I don't think the church has ever been as bad as it is now in terms of a divided opinion about the future. And if we don't give them a glimpse into the future by saying it's not just bad, God is doing good things, God is doing great things, then they're going to lose it and you and I are going to be suffocated. Okay. Each person has certain traits, uh, vices, and then of course virtues that exist in your soul. Now you and I have spoken about the soul. And each soul, listen to this, please listen to my statement. Each soul wants to coexist, which means to exist together. Okay? Like, like minded souls search for each other. Now, we're not talking about virtues only, vices. Virtues, wonderful. I see a virtue in somebody. I like that. I am drawn to that person. Our souls attach. We're not talking about uh, marriages and stuff like that. We're talking about in life. Even though marriage is it's a very important issue. I'm saying souls like to exist together. Now, that's in virtue, but also in vice, in evil. Souls look for one another to do things together. <clears throat> when they built the tower in Genesis 11, which top would reach into heaven, they were totally united. Their souls were coexisting. And they were doing it. The soul of the church needs coexistence as never before. With each other, I'm saying. To be united. I was telling my team the other day, I'm so proud of the, of the, of the Trinity. They do such a great job. You don't get Jesus complaining to the Father. I don't want to do that job. And, and the Holy Spirit saying to Jesus, I'm not going to. You don't have that. They are completely united. That's why they're called one. Now, it's, it's the same thing is with the soul. You and I, all of you watching, we are existing together. And we have one thought in mind. Of course, that's Christ to be, to be sent to the world and shown the good news. But also, what is he saying now? And let us realize that the spirit of Pythos and the spirit of Jezebel have now sought each other so they could coexist and they could become multiple powers. What does that mean for us? It means the control, control, control. Listen, control is not always bad, but it's getting worse. Now, this is dangerous when these souls try to coexist, when there is evil and bad in a human soul, because the mischief doubles. The mischief multiplies as they coexist. The name Jezebel means non-cohabitant, without obligation. So Jezebel, if you want an, an answer, is not just a wicked woman, because people have picked on these poor women for years. Jezebel can be in a male form. Jezebel means non-cohabitant, without obligation. Doesn't need to, to, to be any specific place. Jezebel is a fantasy space. She's an effect, a personality, a lifestyle. Now let's give you a bit of history on, on Jezebel. Because we're going to pray against this together in the next few weeks. I've set myself aside to fast like I've never before and pray. Because God called me to this nation and to Israel. United Kingdom, Australia, Africa, to different nations to speak to them. Now, who was Jezebel in history? The, the daughter of Eth Baal, who was the priest king of Tyre and Sidon. She was married to Ahab, as you know, to ratify an alliance between Tyre and Israel. T-Y-R-E, that's the city, okay? By which Omri provision was made for her to continue, listen, to worship her native god, Baal, in Samaria, her new home. So in other words, it was coming from the top. You realize when somebody has authority to that degree, the queen, it then gets released to the nation. 
She had a strong domineering character and was self-willed and she was forceful. A fanatical devotee of Melquat, the Tyrian Baal. Now, that's a little bit of history I thought I'd give you so you understand she came into Israel as a queen. Her staff, just the people that worked for, numbered 450 of these prophets. 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah. By the time Ahab was king. So she had 450 of the prophets. 400 of the prophets were false prophets that she'd surrounded herself with. And what she clamored for more than anything was for her God to have at least equal rights with Yahweh, God of Israel. I know I'm speaking out of Revelation. I know that I'm speaking from my heart. And I know it's a lot that I'm pouring out to you. But I want you to hear me because God told me to do this. That she wanted her God, Baal, to have equal rights in Israel with Yahweh, God of Israel. Now, I want to tell you who the God of America is. It's Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying the Lord God, or I'm not saying Yahweh or, or Shalom. I'm saying His name. Jesus Christ. People came to this nation for that purpose. This nation was brought to being for one reason. To announce to the world that there is only one God and that is Jesus Christ. There can be no cohabitant. There can be no equal other than Jesus Christ. There's no other God that is equal to him. Do you understand me? So Kim, you're going to get into trouble because in this country we let all religions operate. I know. But there's only one God. Those aren't real gods. Jesus Christ is Lord. Thanks, Charlie. This brought her into conflict with the prophet Elijah. The reason that God is raising up prophets all over the world is because this spirit is so prevalent. This spirit is endeavoring to raise the names of religions and gods and make them equal with Christ. Then it'll get worse. Now we come to the real issue. Now Elijah says, oh, I see. The conflict begins with the prophet Elijah. A battle between Yahweh and Baal is about, to be, is about to take place in the United States of America. Come, Joel. In the United States of America. Did you hear what I said? Kim, I've never heard you being so negative. This is not about negative. We're still going to be blessed. We're still going to have our families. We're still going to see God's abundance in our life. I want you to know that this force is bringing a conflict with the prophets because it has decided that it will dwell in this United States of America. The battle, I'm going to say it as a prophetic word, between Yahweh, Yeshua, and Baha'u is about to take place a battle in the United States of America a spiritual battle is about to take place is Kim you saying that we're in trouble no I'm saying to you get up get out of slothfulness rise up and pray and fast with me is my request you don't have to give up all your food. All you've got to do is give up something and say, we're going to do for the, for the first hundred days in the United States of America and all over the world. I want all of you to join me. I'm going to go on a partial fast to see this victory brought about and the prosperity of his people to take place. A battle between Yeshua and Baal is being fought in the United States of America and is beginning right now now what happened what happened on that mountain of Carmel a massacre I'm not being dramatic a massacre took place of the prophets of Baal The problem was, instead of diminishing Jezebel's zeal, it augmented it. She had a conception, and I want every person to please try and listen to me now, 
of an absolute monarchy. Her conception, her dream was of an absolute monarchy to rule as long as she lived. That spirit is on our nation and will spread if we, the prophets, don't do something about it. I'm not exaggerating. This is a heavy den, but I need to use this to address it. Are you speaking about the president? Are you speaking about the vice? I'm not speaking about it. I'm talking about a spirit. You work it out yourself. But this force has come to join hands. And I'll tell you the one thing that Elijah did that I love. He mocked their gods. He said, do what you have to do to bring fire from heaven because here is a sacrifice in front of you, in your presence. I'm going to offer the greatest offering that Israel has ever given on this Mount of Carmel. I'm going to do it in the presence of Baal. And they began to dance around and scream and hour after hour they cut themselves, they bled, they urinated, they did all kinds of stuff. That's what the Baals did. They were so full of filth. As they did it, Elijah stood up and said, where is your God? Has he gone to the toilet? Has he gone to refresh himself? And began to mock the, the, the God of Baal, the Baals. Thank you.